Sup guys, so remember how I said I'd go into detail with my thoughts on Horizon Zero Dawn later? Welcome to later! And don't worry, no spoilers. In case you're new, or just don't remember, Horizon Zero Dawn was a game I've been looking forward to since E3 last year when it was revealed in the Sony conference. It had this vibe that reminded me of games like Witcher, but with a female lead and robots, which, let's be honest with ourselves, sounds friggin' awesome! People seemed really taken by the idea of a giant robot T-Rex. Huh, wonder where I've seen that before. For whatever reason, people seem to latch onto the whole robot dinosaur thing even though no one ever said all of the robots in the game would be dinosaurs. And yeah, in reality, the T-Rex is pretty much the only one. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I've already told you guys that I had a blast with the game and would totally recommend it. But I do have a ton more to say about it, so I hope you're ready to tune in because I'm Riley and this is Horizon Zero Dawn. All right, so let's start off with the setup. First of all, I love the world they built. I won't reveal any major details that aren't obvious from the onset, but basically this game is more or less what would happen after we lose to the machines in Terminator. Well, except not quite, and I'll leave it at that. Uh, the machines are remnants of our fallen society, and we're remembered as the Ancients, which is a cool spin on things. It does require a little suspension of disbelief, though, once you figure out how humans are still around. Particularly how it's possible we were set back so far, and society's currently in sort of a tribal state. Well, with guns. Kind of. And don't worry, this is all stuff you get in, like, the first 20 minutes. I'm not telling you anything that'll ruin it for you. So the main character, Aloy, comes from... Well, she was raised by... Uh, okay, this one's Spoiler City. I'll just say, she grew up in this territory that runs on a matriarchal system, and their culture reflects this, big time. Women are the more dominant, and the role of motherhood is especially important. It's a really interesting idea. Unfortunately for Aloy, she's motherless, so she was branded as an outcast as an infant. And growing up, she makes it her one goal to discover the truth about what happened to her mother before leaving her homeland behind to explore the greater world. Aloy is just... just awesome! See, despite the gender roles of the tribe, they're still a tribe of warriors and hunters, and Aloy is no different. But she's also curious, smart, and resourceful, which sets her apart from her tribe. They'd prefer to live in blissful ignorance, but she wants to explore, see new things, uh, the works. If I have anything bad to say about her, it's that I can see how people might find her kind of bland at times, but I didn't see her as the real issue, actually. This is one of the areas I really think could have been handled a bit better. And it's not because of bad writing or anything. Actually, it's like the exact opposite. The writing's pretty solid. But you're pretty much alone for most of the game. You don't really get any consistent supporting cast until, like, halfway through. The rest are more recurring characters than anything. Look, I'm not saying you need a ragtag team of rowdy misfits following you around at all times or anything, but at least a partner would have been cool, just to give you more to interact with. Especially since Aloy can actually be one snarky little thing. I wanted to see more interactions between her and other people, but there just weren't a lot of chances. And when you do get one kinda sorta supporting cast member, I'm gonna be honest, his snark outdoes yours by miles. But it's less satisfying because, well, the dude's a bit of a jerk. And he's not even around all the time. Maybe the worst of it is that the potential is totally there. There are tons of characters I'd have loved to see get more time to just be around and be awesome. Ah well, maybe next time. Alright, I don't even need to say this, but I will because it deserves to be said. Oh my god, this game is beautiful! I mean it! Nature really comes alive in this game, man! The attention to detail is amazing, and the landscape is so diverse! Not to mention the place is huge and it feels like it. Well, it's not quite Skyrim levels of enormous or anything, but I'd say it makes up for that with being more diverse. Well, there are some hiccups, though. The most glaring is in the character animations. Nothing's really wrong with the way characters move around. That all looks totally fine. But some of the facial expressions and animations, um, well, they're just really, I don't know, uncanny valley. Also, I don't really know what the exact deal with this was, but a lot of the characters have really shiny faces for some reason. I'm almost certain that was on purpose, but without any explanation, it was just sort of off-putting. Okay, I'm not gonna talk a lot about this part because spoilers, but the thing Aloy wears on the side of her face is called a focus. It's basically a heads-up display. 
It works pretty much like the detective mode from the Arkham games, and it really makes exploration worthwhile, since there are some things you can only find by using it, and they're usually pretty rewarding to go after. But again, I'll leave it at that. All right, I'm about to say something that'll probably divide people. I hate resource management. Uh, don't get me wrong, I understand that it's a thing, but God, it's just so tedious and, and boring. So boring. Uh, not to mention most games that even have resource management and stuff just tend to make it way more complicated than it needs to be. Now, in this game, it manages to avoid the complication part. The interface is really straightforward and easy to understand. But it doesn't escape the whole bored to tears part. Because uh, here's the thing. This isn't Skyrim where you can just legit not deal with it. No, in this game, resource management is a must. You're not Dragonborn or Link, so there's no magic satchel here. You have limited space for everything. Now you can expand that to downright comical levels when you consider that her bag is just a tiny waste pouch or two, but it's still limited. And so is your ammo, which you have to make. Sure, you can buy ammo, but that costs metal scraps, the currency of the game, which you can get from machines. You can get them from people, but there are just more machines around to kill. The thing about that is the machines are what drop your resources to make stuff, too. So you're better off just crafting things yourself. The problem is that a lot of machines are extremely hard to kill with normal arrows. And because the RNG gods just seem to hate me, the drops I need to get the specific materials for special gear wouldn't happen. I couldn't go buy what I needed from the store because the currency in the game, yeah, you use that to make arrows too, which I painfully needed. So I wound up spending way more time than I wanted to just farming for supplies, which as I've said already, is boring. Also, if I might make a recommendation, return to the starting area pretty often. It's just the best place to get berries for healing and it seems like there's more game out there. Uh, game as in animals to kill, not the, uh, never mind. Next. Hell yeah, this is where stuff really starts getting good. The combat in this game is a blast. At least when you're on a roll. Probably because there are so many different approaches you can take and a ton of really unique weapons. You can specialize in setting up kill zones with tons of traps, rush in on a bomb and run with this one explosive slingshot thing. I just like calling it a sling bang, but I think the game calls it a blast sling. Come on, tell me mine doesn't sound cooler. But then there's my favorite method, stealth. I have a feeling I'd make Batman proud because I breeze through tons of missions without ever being noticed. And yes, stealth sniping is extremely satisfying, especially with a sharpshooter bow. I had two damage mods on that bad boy and oh man, things died so fast whenever I had the ammo to use it. Anyway, you can also hack machines to follow you into combat and there's this mode called concentration that slows down time when you're aiming. Aside from helping you line up shots in tight situations, it can also make you look like a total badass if you set up the camera just right. Unfortunately, the combat system isn't without its faults. First of all, Aloy just, well, the girl's as sturdy as wet tissue paper. What's the point of having four cells of health when everything bigger than a watcher can two-shot you? I get it for things like Thunder Jaws, the actual name of the T-Rex bots, but even some people do an obnoxious amount of damage. And in certain situations, it's really slanted against you. As in, it's clear that they're trying to force you to play a certain way. So that was a little annoying, but not nearly as annoying as this game having no lock-on feature. And let me be totally clear about this. It isn't that I can't aim on my own. Oh no, it's the goddamn birds! Glint Hawks and Stormbirds are the most irritating machines in the entire game. Glint Hawks are not only constantly moving, but you will never wind up fighting just one of them. There's one attacking you, expect at least two more to show up. And they all have this infuriating attack where they bomb you with, I don't know, ice or something. Except they usually don't do it all at once. So once that's over and you're busy trying to line up a shot, another one starts attacking you. Sometimes one will be shooting as another tries to swoop down and take your head off. It's just annoying. And Stormbirds? Oh man, if you thought Thunderjaw was gonna be a pain, you're in for it. Stormbirds luckily fly solo, but they are so bulky and so mobile that having no lock-on feature makes them painfully annoying to kill. And even when it touches down, it walks faster than you can run. You cannot dodge its physical attacks. Its weak points are on its wings, which you basically have to shoot with arrows because the sling bang usually won't reach high enough. 
Its breastplate weak point is a little more manageable, but the problem with the Stormbird is that nothing seems to really stop its more dangerous attacks. With other machines, you can cripple them by knocking off components. As far as I saw, that wasn't happening. And I tried everything, to the point where I was almost completely out of ammo. Also, it takes 10 ropes from the rope caster, yes, 10, to tie the thing down. But you'd better hit it really fast once you get him, because he's gonna get up real quick on his own. Also, Thunderjaw has this tail whip attack that's basically a one-shot. It can sometimes leave you with, like, a sliver of health left, but generally if you're hit by it, it's curtains. To curb this, you can shoot off his tail. Stormbirds have the same attack, except the tail doesn't come off, no matter what you do. So even if you manage to stop its electric and dive bomb attacks, you can still wind up screwed. Classy. If I have any other gripes, well, they're minor in comparison. There isn't always clear indication of when you're spotted, so sometimes you'll get attacked completely out of left field, but I'm pretty sure that's not actually supposed to happen, and it's just the game occasionally bugging out, so uh, whatever. Finally, an open world game where your side missions actually matter. Of course, not every mission has an impact, but when things really come to a head, you get to see the impact on a lot of the people you've taken a detour to help along the way. And it was great seeing a lot of them again. In fact, some of them even help you out in those late quests by giving you stuff or uh, contributing to the fight in some way. I haven't played through the game again yet to see if there were any I missed or if those people show up even if you didn't help them out, but seeing some familiar faces was totally awesome and it made it feel like my decisions really did have an impact. And this isn't even really a decision-heavy game like Mass Effect or Dragon Age. The choices generally just boil down to help this person or don't. Yet, it did more to make those decisions feel like they had weight than either of those games did at times. There were some character dialogue options too that I think may have slightly tweaked later interactions, but I can't be certain until I play it again. And believe me, I intend to. Aside from that though, the missions were all pretty fun. A mix of the detective work you get to do, the regular combat, and the unique little add-ons a lot of the missions did made them fun and really stand out. But more than that, a lot of the side missions you got the sense weren't just tacked on to fill a quote. There was weight to them, history, uh, like they thought out well beyond just being a thing to do to help make level grinding less of a slog. I like that. Kudos, game. I know I can get a little uh, fiery, but it really is like I said. It's an awesome game. Fun and diverse combat, rewarding exploration and side missions, a likable lead, cool side characters, even if they aren't there often enough, really interesting social commentary, great world building, and beautiful visuals. For all its flaws, this game really does have a lot going for it, and I can't recommend it enough. And that's pretty much all I have to say about it, so I guess I'm done. Not really sure how often I'll do stuff like this. Hell, I may even change the format a bit so it isn't me just talking. I'll have to get creative, though. If YouTube's taught me anything, it's that game devs can be, well, let's just say our account's in good standing. I'd rather not try my luck too much. Uh, but for now, that's it. You guys know the drill. If you liked what you saw, give that like button a zap. Share with your friends and hit that left button to subscribe or hit that right button to support us on Patreon. I'm Riley and stay tuned.